currently we have approximately about 2,200 gang members in Salt Lake City um, area that's documented, and about that 10% is uh, females in the gangs. The age group that we're dealing with is age probably 13 to 18 is the most common age that we're dealing with the predominant gang members in Utah. You know, back in the day, the women were seen as just kind of like hang around property, like, you know, the girlfriends of, you know, Paco or Little Cholo or something like that. They were in the gang. And nowadays, you know, female are more accepted into the gang as a gang member. I mean, they can put their work in just like the males do. Um, the women commonly um, carry like the weapons for the males, like they're going to a club, a party or something like that. The females a lot of times carry the drugs, they'll carry them inside their bra because um, they know a lot of times that, you know, when they searched by cops, they're not going to take their bras off or do something to that point. I mean, it, there's an extent to a male searching a female. The females have been slowly on the rise in, in gang membership than it has been in, in the past. Um, you start to see a little more of them in the pictures, throwing up the gang signs, wearing the gang colors, where traditionally they weren't allowed to wear that stuff because they weren't the gang members itself. My name is Esmeralda and I'm 22 years old and I want to tell you my story of how I was involved with the gang. And it all started when I, when I came from Mexico, I came to live in Compton and you know there's a lot of gangs over there. My mom was working two jobs. She was working like the whole day and she didn't come home till like 2 in the morning every day. So I didn't really spend time with her, so I didn't really have family here but my mom, my dad, and my brothers. And that was the only family I had, so I didn't have nobody else to run to but my friends. They kind of look for a kid that maybe doesn't have a lot of friends sometimes, and then they kind of take him in, and, and what they kind of include with the gangs is, a, is like a family. You know, they, they protect them, give them protection if they get in a fight with somebody, altercation that they have these guys they can call for backup or to help them out that are maybe bigger, older, that can be more bullied to the kids that are confronting them. Um, they also provide them with alcohol, you know, sometimes drugs, and they get the influence from the older generation and think that's kind of a cool thing. I just didn't want to be alone. I had to be kicking with somebody, you know? who was there to kick it, not my uncles, not my family, not my cousins, just friends that probably felt the same way I did. A day in my life was acting like I was going to school, pick up my friends and then just go kick it. Just go walk around the street sometimes, go in the stores, you know, stealing little things here and there, you know. But I mean, I was little, I didn't know what I was doing. That's how it all started. It was just little things, and then they got bigger, stabbing people. We were just getting off the car, and growing a little bit older, you know, we wanted money and things, you know. So after, you know, after school, later and later on at night, you know, like midnight, just go around and break into cars still stereos and speakers and anything that was in the car, anything. Money, papers, IDs, socials, <laughs> just things like that and sell it. My mom, she always has a feeling of what I'm doing or where I'm at. So she, when she was asleep, you know, she'll have nightmares, you know. And she'd be calling me on my phone, asking me where I'm at. And I was just like, well, I'm just kicking it. But we were really out on the streets, you know, waking into cars or things like that. Well, sometimes I would just look at the phone and I wouldn't answer the phone. But when I did get to talk to her, she'd tell me that she had dreams that I was going to jail, things that, I, you know, it was just the feeling that she had because she's my mom, you know, and she felt what I was doing. When I was going through this, you know, like doing all these crazy things, you know, I can call it like that, I was also cutting myself, you know, and, you know, there was times that my mom would come after work, you know, like at 2 or 3 in the morning, she would open the door, or she would see me laying on the floor, you know, bleeding, and, you know, that was a lot of pain for my mom. 
and it affected my mom because she was so worried about everything I was doing. So her face would get numb, or sometimes she couldn't talk, you know, she had a nervous breakdown. Counting myself was, was just making me feel like I was numb. No matter what I did, I couldn't find that, that happy feeling, you know, or something that made me feel satisfied. It was just, just an empty space that I, that I had to fill in, you know? And just counting myself was, I don't know, it was just something that I did to, take, to try to take my pain away. But actually, I didn't do that. I, I caused more pain, you know, which it was my mom and my little brother most of it. And there were some nights, you know, that he would just be holding me all night. My little brother, you know, he wouldn't let me go because he thought I was going to probably commit suicide or something, you know? So I had my family scared. I do regret calling myself because my little sister who passed away got to see me like that. Something that, something that I can't take back. I've talked to a couple of kids that have gotten out of gangs, um, and there's some kids that still keep that little close net of, you know, like a certain tattoo, even though they're saying they're out of the game anymore, but they'll still have certain traits that we common identify gang members with. Um, but if they don't change their friends, who they associate with, then they're still in the game to us. The way that I look on my out on my outside doesn't, you know, doesn't show what I am on the inside. You know, sometimes people see me and they, they judge me, you know, by the way I dress. Because I'm even though I'm not in the gang anymore, I still look like it sometimes, you know. So people can uh, you know, try to start with me, you know, when I'm not even into those things anymore. Not long ago, I was still dressing the same way, just like if I was still in the gang. Um, I was doing my laundry and, and you know, some other people from the older gang, you know, they, you know, they got off a car and they started jumping me out on the street. It was five guys and they knocked my teeth out, those two right here in the front. And, um, you know, I never thought I was going to be without those, you know, and it's kind of, kind of embarrassing, you know, not having those. I regret it, you know, because if I was already trying to change, you know, I should have changed that too. And you know, I, that, those are things that I do want to change. You know, the way, the way that I represent myself. You know, on the outside. I want to change my life. I want to go back to school. Want to give me a better job. If I do go to college, you know, pretty soon, you know, and I have a career, maybe I can get my little brother to look up to me. Maybe he's gonna want to have a better life. West Valley runs a Project 180, which is former gang members uh, meeting with other kids that are currently juvenile gang members and some that are adult gang members. And they kind of come in there and they tell them, you know, how their life has changed now that they've gotten out of the gang and try to give them some direction maybe on how to get out of the gang and how to be successful. Metro Gang, you know, we work with the, the U of U doctors up there and we do the laser tattoo removal program that they donate their time and it's free. You know, we're finding around 25 to 28, a lot of these gang members start to fall off the chart. They go to prison, they get killed, and they kind of get a wake-up call between that age group saying, hey, you know, maybe I need to do something different in my life. Seeing my mom and seeing all the pain, you know, that she was going through, that's the reason that makes me want to change. I don't ever want to see my mom in pain again. Going nights without sleep, you know, or days without eating, just don't ever want to cause that pain again. Keep these kids occupied, go play basketball, be involved in sports. A lot of times we tell parents and, and people in the community is know who their friends are, where they're at at all times. Don't let them just go on, oh, I'll be home at midnight. Next thing you know, we're coming home, hey, your kid was involved in a drive-by shooting. Be aware, you know, if they have all blue colors in their closet, nothing red, that could be a clue that they're involved in a gang. The biggest thing that family people can do um, in the group is, is support the person.